morning everyone holy Christmas it's here it's here I just got out of the shower opened up my door and it looks like a major award for Gile. must be Italian I mean there's no question I've needed extra lighting in this apartment many times now we're gonna have it I figured I had a couple of Amazon gift cards from Christmas and uh, I've been to the house I think it was appropriate for me to get the leg lamp now. What do you think? Oh yeah, it's starting to come together. There we go. Actually has a few settings. You can turn off the leg, turn off the bulb up by the lampshade. You can leave just the leg on, just that bulb on top. Gives you a few options. I love it. Well, good morning, gang. It's your old pal Jordan the Lion. How are you doing today? Great. You know I'm doing great. I just got a Christmas story leg lamp delivered to me straight from the gift shop. You can actually get those on Amazon and they send them right from the gift shop right across the street where the house is. So save me having to haul it back from Ohio. Um, so I'm excited to have it. Now what I want to do today is I want to have a fun day. I want to go to, I think what I'm going to do anyway is go to Universal Studios and um, I want to take the tram tour again because I did it a few months ago. And when I posted the video, my friend Adam the Woo said, Wow, man, you got really lucky. They, sh they took you down some places that they don't normally do. And I go, oh, really? It's not like a set tour? He said, no, they change it up quite a bit. So it's been a few months. I want to go see how they change it up and what our tour is like today. So Days with Jordan the Lion, backlot tour of Universal Studios begins now. It was kind of funny last night when Breck was getting up to leave. I looked at John. I said, do you want to go stay with Breck? Do you want to go to Breck's house? And he started gritting his teeth and tail was going crazy and I said, okay, okay, you can go. So he didn't, he didn't seem bummed out until I walked him out to Breck's car. And then once they got to the car and I said goodbye, he turned his head away from me. So I think he thought we're going to Breck's house or you're going to Breck's house meant we're all going. I do love seeing this. It makes me feel like I'm in Mexico again. Yeah, I never have regretted getting the pass to here. I, I do love coming here. I haven't gotten sick of it yet. If anything, I should come more often. A little red carpet action. They do still have some of the holiday decorations up. All right, per tradition, wish us luck, Hitchcock. Yes, just a little bit of hints of Christmas left in Los Angeles, I love it. So one of the main reasons I wanna do this today is because last time I took the tour, they kept saying Wisteria Lane. Hey, we're coming up on Wisteria Lane. I didn't know what that was. I didn't follow that show, so I didn't realize till we got up to it that that was the Munsters house. It was actually the uh, Desperate Housewives neighborhood. And so I didn't get it on camera. I'm hoping to get it today. We've definitely seen this one before, but worth taking a look at from The Mummy. I love old cars. 1931 Duesenberg Model J. And I kind of want to get something to eat in the uh, French neighborhood here. I don't think I've ever put that on camera. I'm really shocked. I really, you know, I noticed all over Los Angeles they've taken every bit of Christmas down and I can't believe they've kept it up here. I love it. Yeah. I can still feel like I'm in the holiday spirit. Even Frosty hasn't melded away. I do notice that the entire entrance into where we went to Whoville for the Christmas Spectacular to see the Grinch. That's all covered up, so they're tearing that all down. That's the one thing that is happening. By the way, I was going to mention, if anybody needs some extra money, I think I might have come up with a solution. Find an ogre, get a reward, or an evil fairy. Simple. See what Donkey's up to. That is really nice. Girl, look like you're going to the Kentucky Derby. That is really nice. Perfect comment at the perfect moment. The park is relatively empty, so that probably means that the tour wait won't be an hour or 45 minutes or anything like that. Cut through Springfield to get there. Springfield Elementary. How cool is this place? God, you have to endure the Simpsons music though that is the one downside notice the bathroom signs you've got Marge here and Homer here disco stews is closed until disco comes back sorry 
Well, that's all right. We're at the studio tour anyway. 10 minute wait, let's do it. So if you didn't take this tour with me last time, it is hosted by Jimmy Fallon. The trick for us is to get one of the inside or outside seats of the, the tram. And usually they have Doc Brown creeping around out here, so wonder where he's at today. We kind of got the same positioning we got last time, which is good. Uh, these are our studios. Right? The studio out there is private property, so if something falls off, please do not jump off my tram to retrieve it. Pull the cord. Myself or Diego will go back there to get it for you. Uh, but please do not jump off my tram. To create a whole city dedicated to movie making, and that city that he wanted to create is still thriving today. If you look on your right hand side, that's Fire Station 51. You are going to look at it and think that it's a fake firehouse or a. TV show or a movie, it's not. That's a real fire station. Those are real firemen, real fire truck. City. So we have a fan of the hit singing competition, The Voice. This is where they film The Voice when they're on the air. So we're going to be making a right hand turn. Bear with us and bear with Diego. There's a lot of trucks. This is where the old this Phantom of the Opera stage, stage used to be. Stage 12. It is. They said that Frankenstein filmed inside stage 12. You guys are uh, currently entering right now the front lot of Universal Studios Hollywood. So we have definitely officially said goodbye to the theme park and now you're on the real working studio. Guys, it is a film day today, so keep your eyes peeled. You never know who or what you're gonna see out there. People you see walking around, golf carts going by. Uh, if you see uh, you know, dark colored SUVs and the doors open up, always look. You never know who or what you're gonna see out here. It is a real working uh, studio. Like the interviews and stuff. They always shoot those in here, and they also have this first one, stage 20. Stage 20 is usually uh, used as a mill to help build the sets and the props and things like that to take over to the sound stage. Most of these that's where they're filming the show uh, Superstore with America Forever of the Feldman, Mark McKinney. If you watch that show, it looks like they rented out a Walmart or a Target. They did. They actually built the entire store and put it right inside there. Take a look at your screens. Here it is on your screen right here. And stage 21 looks a little bit different. You guys might notice that stage 21 has corrugated metal on the outside, and then the other sound stages you're going to see are all concrete. The reason why is that's the oldest sound stage on our property. It's the oldest, and it's also the second largest. Okay. And if you ever wonder where the stars go, look at these trailers. These trailers over here on the left hand side, that's where the stars go to get their hair, their makeup done, they'll rest, relax, grab a latte. They wait for the director to come up with them and go to set, and they go inside and they start filming. Okay. So this next area we're going to be taking you to is called our TV Alley. We have lots of TV shows that have filmed on this property, and you guys, this is a very busy area of our front lot. All that construction, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but we're getting ready to build Super Mario World, so get ready for that. That's what they're doing. We also have uh, The Voice filming when they're here. We have Superstore construction. So we're going to talk a little bit more about TV shows, because like I said, we do have a long history of TV shows on our property. Over on the right-hand side, I'm going to hop off the microphone because the red light is on. They were filming the show Good Girls. So if you guys are fans of Good Girls, the, the Christina Hendricks, Retta Mae Whitman, they're filming in there. Okay. Your first celebrity star sighting is coming up in the left. Look, it's Ted. What's up, Ted? <laughs> Ted is standing outside of these beige bungalows. And if you look on your left hand side, those beige bungalows, those used to be dressing rooms for stars like Rock Hudson, Doris Day, Lucille Ball. They're still standing today, but now they're being used as production offices for writers, producers, directors. Some of the top production companies in all of Hollywood are right out here. And if you look at the parking spots and look at the names, you might see some names you recognize. I'm going to point a couple of these names out to you right now. The first one, Elizabeth Banks from the Pitch Perfect films and Hunger Games. She has her parking spot out here filming them a lot. She'll go inside go to her office, do her thing. You guys might also notice on the left hand side we have Jennifer Lopez's parking spot right there. See that? So that is the Jennifer Lopez. So when she's here on property, she'll pull in, park her car. She's the executive producer for her show, World of Dance. Also look to your left hand side, down this corridor, you'll see a sign that says MP Productions. That's Mark Platt Productions. That's the guy that brought you Wicked on Broadway. He's currently working on Wicked the Musical, the movie. It is a pre-production. And the most popular bungalow is the last one, Bungalow 5195 has a very familiar profile on the outside. That's Mr. Alfred Hitchcock. That was his bungalow back in the 60s. Now it's being used by the wonderful Martha De Laurentiis and her team at the De Laurentiis Company. 
two brand new sound stages over here on the left hand side. We have stage 22 and stage 23. Uh, these two sound stages, the first production I'm filming there was Hairspray Live, the musical. Jennifer Lopez's show World of Dance films in there. America's Got Talent films in there every once in a while. And it's currently being used for Will and Grace. So Will and Grace films there in front of a live audience every other Wednesday. Right now they are on a little bit of a hiatus. They got picked up for the season as you guys know. So they're coming back when it's time. But right now they're on a little bit of a break. Things they might look real, they're not. These buildings are literally made out of plastic, wood, plaster, styrofoam, foam rubber, fiberglass, chicken wire. That's all it is. Nothing is real out here, okay? We're going to get you guys, we're going to loop around this uh, wall here. And we're going to get you guys in a little bit closer and you can see them. But not one real brick over there on the left-hand side. That big wall full of brick, not one real brick. It's all plastic. Now, the man responsible for this entire area that you're about to see is none other than Steven Spielberg. Because in 2008, we had a fire out here. Fires are very common on back lots, as they happen all the time. But this fire for us happened in 2008. Uh, and when the fire happened, uh, the next day he said, I'm going to rebuild this for you guys. And he did. It took him two and a half years to do so. We now have one of the most detailed, one of the most elaborate metropolitan sets of movies to go back on history. So thanks to him, these buildings used to only be 20 feet tall, but now you give that guy a job and they're 50, 60, 70 feet tall. That wall is a hand-painted three-dimensional mural called a trompe l'oeil. That's a French word meaning pull the eye. So when you're filming on the opposite side, it looks absolutely real. So look at that, all three-dimensional. It looks real on camera. But take a look on your right-hand side. Look at these buildings, all thanks to Steven Spielberg. And if you go up to these buildings and you tap on them, they're all hollow, they're all faked, all plastic. These four columns here in front of the church, if you go up to the church, you touch those columns, literally plastic, uh, they're hollow, not much going on inside. You can see some of the paint is peeling off. And during productions, during filming, they would paint over it and kind of touch it up before they start filming. But also, you guys, I want you to look down this road right here. You're going to see down this road a row of houses with steps coming down. That's our Brownstone Street. That's Kevin McAllister's uncle's house in Home Alone 2, lost in New York. Remember, he gets up top, he throws the bricks out of his Joe Pesci on the head. It's also where this guy lived in Bruce Almighty. Take a look. Grace the dog! I'm in the shower! It's like there it is. Outside good. It's like bad outside good. Ah. Ah. At the end of the movie where Shia LaBeouf's character Sam was running down the street and Megatron is chasing him, the buildings are blowing up, uh, this is it, and those Hydra agents are chasing him. This is where we shot that. They can blow these up, they can light them on fire, they can make it snow, they can make it rain, they have full control over the environment, they don't have to worry about dealing with real residents. We teamed up with an amazing director by the name of Peter Jackson, and he brought us this big building right here, King Kong 360 3D. Here he is to say hello before we go in. I just went on. I wanted to become a filmmaker. Action! I like films that just take you away from your real life and sweep you up in adventure. Kong literally does that. I mean, you're on board the ship, you're sailing to a lost island, you're encountering a monster. So I was you along for the ride. All right. We're surrounded left and right hand side. These go away. Oh. oh no, guys, watch out on the right hand side. Right hand side. Here he comes, right for us on the right. Watch out. Back to the Future Part 2. Remember Marty goes to the future, 2015, he sees all these cars there flying go. around. There they are, the lights are false. Far the pro, 2008 We even have the Flintstone car cars. from Knight Rider. You're going to see Marty Rebel's car. They said this is actually car. a VW movie, with a Ferrari shell from work, Magnum. He purchased himself a sports car. Biff's car. There it is. If you guys are fans of the Fast and the Furious a lot of films, these Back are the, the Future 2 stars stuff. from those movies. Oh, that's and awesome. then one of my favorites is the gyrosphere. If you guys saw the Jurassic World, the gyrosphere, you're going to see it here, but you're not going to see any glass around it. You know why you're not going to see any glass on it? Because there never was any Looks glass. Looks kind of like the uh, same the cars we saw last time we were here. So all the glass in those scenes, it was all CGI. It was all digital. There was, there Fast was never and the there. Furious. Look at this tank at the end. This tank 
That's not a real tank. That's a brand new Jurassic assault vehicle World. the military uses, but they put a fake tank shell on top, and that's all plywood painted to look like metal. I'm going to ruin Hollywood for you guys. Get ready. And if you're a fan of America's Got Talent, what's this? Yeah. All right. So in this next area, but guys, it wasn't equipment Costa Rica. It was actually one of our parking structures here at Universal. Some of you guys probably parked in it today. And over on the right-hand side, there's dinosaurs in these cages. These dinosaurs are the same dinosaurs that you saw. I promise you guys, there were dinosaurs in these cages the last tour I did. I'm not kidding. Okay, there they are. Sorry, guys. My bad. My bad. Okay, so do you guys agree with me that at the Jurassic Park films, every time the two got me. up, it was raining? Think about it. You know when they do that? It helps set the mood. It helps intensify that scene. Every single time the helpless victim comes running out of the house because the guy with the chainsaw. The weather most days out of the year. Yeah, it's a little chilly. All right, we're going Sunday's to Mexico. Through, but every once in a while we'll get some rain. Only it's supposed to be raining or snowing, but the sun is shining. You can create the weather. So look to your left hand side. It's one of my this. favorite parts of the tour. I'm hit this button here and then this button. Those two buttons that I just hit are going to create thunder and lightning. The thunder is a soundtrack, and we hide the speakers up top. If you look over there, you're going to see the lightning. That lightning, guys, is just a strobe light. Now, my favorite part is this. Watch. I'm going to hit these three buttons. One, two, three. There they go. Comes One, our rain. Two, three. It turns the water on. It shoots the water up in the air. It falls right back down naturally just like so. That's so cool, right? So go ahead and get a picture. Get a little video. And guys, watch what happens when I hit the button. And that way, it'll kind of go. Oh, my God. Oh my gosh, whoa, whoa, whoa. You guys, I'm so sorry. I hit the wrong button. I hit the wrong button. My bad. Here's the first car. Watch out. Whoa. Thousands of gallons of water come rushing down the hill. My bad. There it is on your screen, a big fat liar. Westworld. Anybody watch Westworld? If you're a fan of Westworld, season one, episode five, there's a scene where they go searching for the town of Pariah. We had short cowboys back in the day, so we put the little guys in front of the smaller doorways, and what do you think happened on camera? They're bigger and brownier than they actually are in real life. The funny thing is, to this day, we still use illusions like that with some of your favorite action stars, superheroes, and Hollywood hunts, ladies. Yep. If any of you ever met one of your favorite stars in person, you might have been like, oh, you're not as tall as I thought you Spain, Rome, Germany, it's also the birthplace of those monsters. But if you're a fan of The Good Place on NBC, welcome to The Good Place. Yes, you're in The Good Place. I'm not supposed to be here. I can't risk going to the bad place. Okay, well, maybe it's not all that bad. But yeah. How can I help you? What is the bad place like? Well, You're also driving to the fictional country of Genovia for Princess Diaries 2, Royal Engagement, starring Anne Hathaway. All my adults on board, you might remember a movie called City Slickers of Billy Crystal. The opening of that movie, he's in Pamplona, Spain with the running of the bulls. This is the where the running of the bulls scene took place. Uh, but I wasn't kidding about the, the history here. This is a piece of Hollywood history. These sets have been here since 1923, where the movie hunts back to Notre Dame. In the late 20s and 30s, all those classic monsters like Frankenstein, Mummy, The Wolfman, Dracula, Hunchback, they got their start over here on the right-hand side. Oh, they're filming. Oh, that was Joey Fatone. In a major city, it's really expensive. Here, it's a lot cheaper. It's one rental fee. You rent out this building, you can do whatever you want. Nicki Minaj was in here doing a music video two years ago. Whoa. I think we're having an earthquake. You guys feel that? We're having an earthquake. Oh no, watch out guys, the roof is coming down, the roof is coming down, they're burnt. Oh my gosh. We got a little fire back there, hang on guys, stop, drop, and roll. Whoa. Head to the chopper. Ow. Everybody get down, head to the chopper. Oh, first car, watch out the right hand side, the ground is breaking. Whoa. My gosh, you guys, this is the big one they call part of the because they got us attacked by dinosaurs, King Kong, Flash Blood. Welcome to the beach is closed. That's because they had the great white shark out there. Well, listen, what you guys don't know about me is I'm from Hawaii. I got up, I caught the shark. 
he was 27 feet, but look at that thing. It's like a 10 footer, right? Big whoop. So my buddy George, he helped me catch the shark this morning. He's still in the water. He wants to make sure there's nothing going on. So he's going to do one final sweep of the harbor. And guys, if you look out there, you're going to see him pop up in just a second. Now George is going to... Oh my gosh. Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on. That fin is way bigger than that fin. I don't think I caught the right shark. There's George. George. Dude, get out of the water right now. Get back in the boat. We didn't catch the right shark, George. George, get out of the water, man. Seriously. Wait, what? I can't hear you. What? Say it again. Oh. Yikes. Okay, uh, well, have a good night. See you tomorrow. Bye. You guys, the shark can be anywhere. He could be on the left-hand side. There's trees over there, guys. There's trees over there. All right, everybody look on the right. Look at that yellow barrel in the water. See that yellow barrel? Watch. We put shark bait on it. He's going to take it right now. There he goes. Oh my gosh, wait a minute, is that gasoline? The gasoline is going all over the place. Whoa! Okay, the whole pier is on fire. That's not good because we're on the pier, guys. Yikes. That police boat back there, he's going to chomp down on it. Look out, it's a shark! Whoa! Look out, it's a shark! Whoa! Look out, it's a shark! Whoa! One more time. Look out, it's a shark! Whoa. That's cool, we didn't get to see this last time. Oh man, Bruce the mechanical shark. Yeah, that wasn't supposed to happen. The shark was actually written into a lot more scenes, but this is what happened. It's actually one of my favorite stories. They never tested the sharks in water. They tested the mechanics and the movements of the shark on dry land. They got a giant hose and they squirt the top of the shark to make sure the paint didn't rub off. They did it several times and it all worked. Uh, but then they, they were like, okay, the shark's working. Let's go to the East Coast. Let's start filming this thing. So they took the cast, the crew, the sharks, and everyone to the East Coast. They put those sharks on gimbals. They placed those gimbals into the Atlantic Ocean on the very first day of filming. And they all broke. All three of those sharks stopped working, so they had to stop the movie, bring the sharks back to California, open them up and redo the inside, and it set the entire movie back 159 days. Steven Spielberg was 27 years old making that movie, and he thought his career was done. It's from the best little whorehouse in Texas, with Dolly Parton for Reynolds. That was also LMFAO's Party Rockin' House. Rob Zombie's House of a Thousand Corpses as well. Because you're going to go, oh my gosh, this is Wisteria Lane, home to Desperate Housewives. That's right. Welcome to Wisteria Lane, guys. Left hand side, evil, on different color. They changed it once they left. Next door is 1313 Mockingbird Lane, home to the Munsters, right there. Next door to those There's guys. There's the Munsters' house, house. Played by Terry Hatcher. That right was home there. to the Hardy Boys at one time. If you look across the street, leave it to Beaver House right over here. Then, of course, we have Marsha Cross's character, Bree Vandekamp's house. And then the left-hand side, this house here with the red door, that's Lynette Scavo's house, played by Emmy Award-winning actress Felicity Huffman. But do me a favor and take a close look at that house. It's really interesting that you can go inside that house, and if you make a right-hand turn, there's a cliff. It's a full-size house, but we only build the fronts and the sides. There's literally nothing behind that. You go inside, it's just a giant cliff, all right? Um, as we make this roundabout, I'm going to play you a clip. Look at this clip, and I want you to pay attention in the background to all the flowers, all it's in the name. Especially this shot right here. Uh, greenery, so many flowers, it was beautiful. But if you look around right now, there's not one flower anywhere. The reason why, every single flower on that show was 100% plastic and silk. They were all fake. They learned real quick that the flowers being real cost a, a lot of money to replace. So in this case, if something fell off, now guys, Monsters on this road, house. in case any murder, so they always teamed up and helped each other out. Now, this road was also featured... Uh, they said this was Matlock's house. Here, like the Burbs. Remember the Burbs? Oh, here's the Burbs house. It was also house. where Christina Ricci lived in Casper. <laughs> Nelly's Dilemma music video featuring Kelly Rowland. And there it is again in Desperate Housewives. So that's Martha May Huvia. She's decorating her There's house. Who she does it so well every year. And the houses that you're looking at on your screen are coming up on the right hand side. One time in a large portion of our back lot. But you guys, the residents of Whoville, they had to be careful because their next door neighbor wasn't just the Grinch and his cute little dog Max. No, here at Universal, their next door neighbor around the corner here was a psycho. Oh yeah, the incredible Bates Motel and Psycho House are still standing on our lot to this very day. This is a piece of Hollywood history. They're still standing since 1960. There's one of the cars. Look at the top of the hill. You can see the house up there. Hey guys, raise your hands if you've seen Psycho. How many of you have seen Psycho, the original? It's one of my favorite movies. Do you know that I asked the censors because his film featured a flushing toilet? 
You guys, Norman Bates is right there on the front porch. Okay, don't look at him because he's a bit of a psycho. I didn't know he was home, guys. I'm really sorry. Here we go. Hi. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, we don't want no trouble. Hey, Ford car, you're on your own. Oh my gosh. Ford car, hang on tight, hang on tight. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, <laughs> All right, so from one classic set to this colossal set, welcome to the incredible airplane crash scene from War of the Worlds. Tom Cruise, Dakota Fanning, and Justin Chatwin. What you're looking at out there is an actual 747 airplane. Steven Spielberg purchased this airplane from an airplane junkyard in the Mojave Desert for about $50,000 in one piece. He spent in total eight months purchasing, destroying, transporting, and filming. But if you go back and you watch that movie, you see it on screen for literally four minutes and 23 seconds. All of this for four minutes. Take a look at your screens, guys, and here is a little bit of what it looked like. Because it's, it's just something you don't see. Uh, look on the right hand side, right past these trees. If you look over there, you're going to see that works. During filming, we can put a picture of clouds on that wall. You can fill the entire basin with water. Remember Sully? There's the great outdoors house. Evacuate. And the right, house so from Coach. you're looking at is real. The airplane, the water, and the people, that's all real. We'll look closely in the background. See the trees, the buildings, and the clouds? That New York skyline back there, that's all fake. Those are all CGI. Those, those clouds are CGI. They're all fake. Those buildings are fake. The only thing real is what you're looking at front. The airplane, people, and the water. It was also featured in Dunkirk. Portions of the English Channel were done out there. Hunger Games catching fire. What you're looking at our lot. We're 400 acres. We go all the way from back there, all the way through here, all through the front lot. That's all City Walk over there. That's the theme park. So we're the biggest, the busiest, the most historic studio in the entire world. Well, I'm happy. We got to go see the Munsters house, the Leave it to Beaver house, the whole neighborhood that I wanted to see. So this tour was about half of what we saw the last time and half new. And look who's coming up. Hello, doctor. I told you before we took the tour, he's usually over here. I am definitely missing French food and French culture, so I guess this will have to do. We'll see what they have down this little walkway. They did get a lot of the signs right, like the that sign up there, that's exactly how they are in Paris. Like a lot of these aren't open. Oh, there's Lucy. Lucy's in Paris. Oh my God. But isn't it nice here? The weather in Paris is just the same as Hollywood. It's very. Uh, I'm glad that Ricky was finally willing to bring you here. Oh, you know, I had a twist his arm. Okay, he doesn't know I'm here. So I stuck. Oh, mum's the word. Oh boy. So it sounds like she might be stepping out on Ricky. I guess that's a little payback for, you know. <laughs> history. There's the Moulin Rouge. It's kind of cool. If you can't go to the real Moulin Rouge, this is, uh, and it looks pretty similar. You get the feel anyway. All right, let's go back to that French bistro. It looks like it's one of the only places that's open for food. Oh, this is from the movie Public Enemy from 2009. Paris police car. Oh, cool, I've never been in here. Never even knew this was back here. How cool is this? Let's see what they got inside here. Eh, that is really the way of Paris is a lot of bistro sandwiches, but I don't know if I'm in the mood for that today. Well, my friends, I think I'm gonna call it a day here. That was an amazing tour, and tonight I am gonna take off. I am gonna hop on a plane and fly somewhere. So come back and see me tomorrow to see where we end up. Have a great night, everyone. We'll see you all then from somewhere else. Have a great night. Goodbye.